All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, hopefully you can see my slides. Uh, if you cannot, uh, please let me know in chat. Uh, but yes, I'm so uh, glad to see everybody uh, in the chat who is a fellow Hoosier who has uh, someone attending Indiana University right now. Um, I uh, think the conference has been great. I have learned so much from all of you fellow community managers, and um, I'm happy to share a little piece of our story at the Alumni Association. We've spent uh, the last uh, few years, three to five, in very big transformational change, and the CMX engagement cycle has absolutely been a part of that. Um, but first, uh, a quick disclaimer, I just want to acknowledge several of my colleagues are here on the session today, and I I absolutely did not do all of this work um, by myself. So um, I would love for them to say hi in chat. So uh, our fellow uh, CMXers have an opportunity to meet you and, and see your name and who you are. Um, I hopefully will remember to give a couple shout outs throughout the presentation, um, but really uh, we have a large alumni body and a small staff. So it took all hands on deck. So I'm so appreciative and um, proud of the work that um, we've all done collectively. Uh, so first, um, a little bit about me. Uh, so I am the Director of Strategic Operations. Hi, Austin is a fellow uh, alum, fellow Hoosier, uh, for the IU Alumni Association. I've been with the Alumni Association for six years. Um, I am also an IU alum, so uh, born and bred, it's, it's in my blood. Uh, I am obsessed with my dog. My best friend is an 11-year-old mutt, and she <clears throat> doesn't know her size or her age, uh, but she slobbers and she's the absolute best. Uh, so uh, quickly, uh, what I put together for us today uh, is I wanna tell you, uh, in order to understand kind of how transformational this was for us, I think it's important to give a little bit of uh, context uh, regarding the university to uh, uh, kind of set the stage for the conversation. Uh, I also wanna share, um, of course, I could talk about this for hours, um, but I want to share a little bit of the why and the problem that we're trying to solve. Uh, and then similarly, uh, again, we could talk about for hours and, and fill in all kinds of details, but we've got to keep it to 20 minutes. Um, I want to share how we utilize are utilizing the community engagement strategy and a little bit about our transition. And finally, uh, how do we know it's working? Is it working? Um, so that will be the nature of our session today. Really quickly, uh, there's always time for trivia. So uh, I'm going to test my fellow Hoosiers in the room. Uh, if you would please enter your uh, answer in chat. Uh, if you can tell me what 1979 Academy Award winning American film starring Dennis Quaid and Daniel Stern centered around IU's historic bike race and was filmed it on and around IU's main campus in Bloomington. Is it? A, breaking away, B, breaking wind, C, cutters, D, little 500. We've got some A's. Oh, how nice, Ruth. My dad showed me this movie when I was little. Okay, well, I'm not fooling you guys. So uh, you are all correct. It is A, Breaking Away. It's a great film. Uh, the race uh, around uh, which it is uh, centered is called Little 500, uh, modeled after the Indianapolis 500, the car race. So very good job. We may have a couple more uh, pieces of trivia uh, scattered. That's right. It is called the best weekend in all of uh, college sports. That's right. Good job, Marilyn. Uh, okay, so a little history about Indiana University. It started in 1820, just kidding, I'm not going to narrate 200 years of history for you, uh, but what I will do is point out a couple of significant dates. Uh, the university was founded in 1820. The Alumni Association um, was founded uh, as a result of a fire uh, that burned down the original building of the university and the Society of Alumni and Friends uh, came together to help rebuild the school. Um, so that was born in 1854. And then the next date I want to draw your attention to is 1916. That was the year that the Alumni Association became a uh, dues paying member organization. So we had our first annual uh, membership of $1 and a first uh, lifetime membership of $25. And uh, so all of that to say, uh, we are very old. 
The other date that I want to draw your attention to is 1971, and that was the year that our um, ninth campus uh, came into our family. So the other point that I'm hoping to make is that we are very big. So we are old and big is our university, uh, our institution. And so uh, hopefully that will give you a little bit of context to understand how uh, Steering the, steering the ship uh, was a little bit difficult as we were transitioning to a new model. Um, I know that never happens in your organizations. You all can probably pivot and transition very quickly. Um, again, to uh, iterate on the magnitude or breadth of our university, uh, this is fresh data from the last uh, uh, fiscal year. We have 384,089 graduates in Indiana. Six 197,465 graduates in the US and globally, we have 744,527 uh, graduates around the world. Uh, there's a famous quote that we love here uh, in Indiana uh, by uh, the writer, Kurt Vonnegut. And it says, I don't know what it is about Hoosiers, but wherever you go, there's always a Hoosier doing something very important there. Um, and I have to say uh, that is very true. I can just tell from the chat from all of you um, Hoosiers in the chat as well. Uh, to name a few uh, notable alumni, we have uh, Dr. Kent Brantley, who helped eradicate uh, Ebola in Liberia. Lily King, hopefully you're familiar with Lily King. She's an Olympic uh, swimmer and she medaled this year in Tokyo. Sage Steele, if you're a sports fan, she's a co-host on ESPN's uh, Sports Center, and uh, Kevin Klein, of course, has been in several movies, which um, we are familiar with. So, uh, what's the problem? Uh, we have this huge alumni base. Uh, they are all over the world doing amazing things. Uh, why did we need to change anything? Um, and I'm so, uh, I would love, I wish we were in person, I would love to have this conversation um, with all of you as it relates to your uh, your world in the, the corporate um, sector, uh, our work really is community engagement. That That is our entire business. And so uh, alumni engagement equals community engagement. So um, how is it uh, that we were having any challenges or needed to uh, address anything? Um, well, it's complicated. So let me tell you a little bit more about it. Um, so how do we take this big alumni body of almost uh, 745,000, almost 750,000, uh, and create it and into meaningful communities. And so uh, another challenge is that we are also faced with showing value uh, to the university. So how do we create meaningful uh, community engagement for this big mass of uh, uh, alumni population and um, also provide value uh, to the university. And so uh, what we did is we have to be our member, pro we are a member organization. And so our member base is 62,726, which in comparison probably seems quite small to the total alumni body. Um, it is actually uh, on track with other uh, major institutions. We're often uh, going back and forth between one and two uh, with Penn State in terms of number of members. And then we also have this population that is much closer to us, uh, which are our participants from our uh, events and experiences. They are the ones um, most directly engaged. There are volunteers. How do we steward um, all of these uh, alumni in such a way that uh, it is meaningful for them and also um, is providing value back to the university? Um, and as you can imagine, what we uh, ran into is that there are 744,527 uh, living alumni. So there are likely 744, 527 reasons why um, people love IU. We are so vast, they've had very different experiences. And so to um, direct and say, uh, this is why you should care about IU, this is why you should engage in IU, wasn't really working for them. And so uh, just to give you some perspective, we uh, evaluate a lot of things, uh, but one of the uh, things that we evaluate is loyalty to the university by way of participants, uh, those who most likely engage with us, they are both member and non-member, and we dissect the, uh, parse the data in so many different ways, uh, but we use the MPS tool, Net Promoter Score. Uh, the scale of that tool is um, positive 100% to negative 100%. And 
uh, essentially, it's asking, would you recommend um, being a member of the Alumni Association? And so uh, last year, uh, our results were that uh, we were negative 8% on that scale of positive 100 to negative 100. On top of that, uh, again, and these are some of the details that I wish I had time to get into, um, our member retention rates were decreasing. Uh, we were having a really hard time engaging young alumni. Um, if you'll remember the that old piece, the old characteristic, uh, the demographic of our members skews uh, much older as well. And so um, to, uh, sorry to be crass, but uh, everybody dies, they will die um, one day in the hopefully not too near future, but we need to be planning for um, scaling and growing our community um, once that happens. And then also, again, going back to we needed to show the value of the membership, both to the members and to the university. So what did we do? Um, this slide skips several years and lots of hard work of uh, figuring this out. So we uh, led a on top of a couple years of uh, quantitative research regarding our numbers uh, operational dollars, uh, dues, et cetera, number of memberships. Uh, we led a uh, multi-year project to identify and uh, be a member experience as it was and uh, decide how we make that better. So what we uh, needed to do was shift our focus to the member retention piece. And I mentioned this later um, when I talk about where CMX comes in, but really as it relates to um, in a shared vernacular here, the spaces model, we were sort of positioning the uh, member program as a pro uh, acquisition model and a product um, as opposed to uh, what it really is or what it really should be, which is basically all the other letters. So um, basically what we did, we uh, utilized design thinking. Hopefully maybe some of you are familiar with that. Uh, we utilized that to help identify what is the real problem. We did a lot of really great empathy research, uh, asking the end users. And um, there was a session yesterday, which was so good, that talked about um, to determine, you know, wh what you need to do or what how you need to improve. You ask your um, current, uh, current customers, current members, as opposed to uh, reaching out to new ones. You know, what are they uh, most, what do you need to do to keep them loyal um, to your brand? And so that was the kind of work that we were doing. Um, and basically we redesigned our member model to reflect uh, the other letters in the spaces model uh, to be one of engagement and contribution and support. We also lowered the barrier to becoming a member to the alumni association. So as you can imagine, if you are a young alum, the first thing you want to do when you graduate is probably not give more money to the university that you just paid for probably more years of tuition to. So we uh, developed a free uh, member uh, level of membership so that our to help engage our young alumni and position the other paying levels to help support uh, contribute to covering those expenses for those memberships. The other thing, uh, lastly, that we needed to do is differentiate the member experience. And again, this was fo is to focus on uh, stewardship. How do we uh, develop and increase that loyalty percentage that I um, shared before. And this, all of this is where, oh, actually, this is more IU trivia. Next, uh, we'll do another chat cliffhanger. Uh, we'll do another quick piece of uh, trivia. What brand of toothpaste was invented by IU professors in 1955? Was it Colgate, Prest, Sensodyne, or Aquafresh? A. This is a little tricky. I don't know why you would know this necessarily, unless you just like this brand of toothpaste. All right, the answer is B, Crest. Um, and actually, as I was looking into this, I won't share this story because I don't have time, but looking into the details of of this, it was uh, quite fascinating. There were a lot of um, dental issues, cavities uh, after the Industrial Revolution. And so many um, uh, 
uh, were, were recruits uh, weren't eligible to go into the military for World War, World War II because they didn't have the proper like hygiene or dental, whatever. So uh, there was a, a rush to figure out this formula uh, to get the uh, fluoride toothpaste is what uh, was invented. And so it was Crest. They were first to the market with it. So fun little fact. Okay, now, now that we've talked about brushing our teeth uh, is when uh, enter CMX. And so this is when we uh, kind of latched on to the, uh, engage, uh, the engagement model, uh, engagement cycle, it was called at the time. And as I mentioned, repositioned our approach uh, using the spaces model from one, uh, from, from one of acquisition and product to one of support, contribution and engagement. And so uh, to give you a, a brief example of kind of how that worked, we learned through that project that uh, we were doing a lot of work to uh, uh, acquire members on the front end. We would give them a pair of striped socks, candy striped socks. If you, if you know, you know, you know, that's a thing. Um, and so then we kind of... Uh, left them alone after that, which obviously contributed uh, to our low, lower than we wanted uh, loyalty score. And so that was a, a big uh, aha moment, if you will. Uh, we, we had people, um, you know, doing the math uh, from, okay, well, is my the cost of my um, membership is that I could buy these socks for 20 bucks somewhere else. Well, that's not the point. The point is um, that this is a cause-based thing. This is a giving model. You're contributing to uh, another alum being engaged and you're con contributing to programs that we're able to provide um, to young alumni. So that was a, a huge shift for us. We also uh, implemented the engagement, uh, at the time, engagement cycle. It is now the social identity cycle. At the time, there were four um, steps in that cycle. And what we learned, um, again, going back to that piece of there are 745,000 different reasons why uh, people love IU uh, because their experience was so unique. We have spent, uh, we had spent years trying to be all things to all people, all things to all 745,000 uh, alumni and all things to the academic units at the university that we serve. Um, again, I'm sure another thing that never happens uh, in your world, uh, but obviously you can imagine uh, that's not sustainable. And uh, we were, uh, we had bandwidth issues and so we needed to uh, make a change. And so what we learned is that we don't need to tell alumni how they identify themselves or their relationship with the university and it is a relationship that was really the biggest uh change is that it wasn't um a, uh, it was more than a transaction in terms of engaging members and people uh becoming a member of the alumni association it was a relationship and we need to cultivate it and grow it um to help further that relationship and so uh rather than create all the things that um, they love about IU. We just need to provide access to the things that they love about IU. We are uh, uniquely positioned to be able to do that. And so um, that is the most immediate or direct application of the engagement cycle. Uh, and then also uh, since then we have, again, more details that I wish we had time to talk about. Um, implemented a virtual alumni community uh, to supplement or allow um, alumni to create virtual community groups around interest or industry, things that uh, are a little bit uh, less heavy to, to manage. Of course, we did the whole um, uh, strategy canvas and said, these are our, this is our business alignment. This is our member alignment. This is our positioning. Um, I would love to share all of that with you sometimes, but we did all of those things and applied it to our virtual alumni community. Um, so those were just a few, a few of the things that we have done in the last couple of years. So how do we know that it's working? Um, most recently, our most recent uh, uh, alumni engagement survey that we send out annually that includes this net promoter score, uh, we increased from uh, just in a year of taking that approach and in the middle of a pandemic. So um, uh, obviously the number of events and experiences with which to engage were fewer, um, but by positioning ourselves in a way that um, it was user centric, um, more aligned with how alumni identify themselves uh, within the, the universe of the university, 
uh, and also by steward, focusing on stewarding the member experience, we were able to increase that number from negative 8% to 13%. And I've included just a couple of um, quotes that we received uh, uh, qualitative uh, anecdotal feedback from that survey. And so a couple, just a couple highlights. You never really leave IU. The continued contact is priceless. Um, I feel like I'm a part of something bigger than myself with similar people who understand my love for the school, for the town, um, academics and sports. That's a far cry from someone saying, well, how much is this pair? Can I just get some candy stripe socks? Um, that's a big shift. Uh, and again, remember, uh, we are old and big. And so to do something like that uh, is uh, monumental. Uh, and so we're still improving. We're still tweaking. We're still working on it. Um, I was in a session uh, yesterday about uh, metrics on community. And I believe the advice was set it up the right way. The metrics will come. And that is in part true. Some of this stuff we didn't know how to measure um, because we, uh, uh, we've never done it before. We've never done it this way before, but we do have some consistent uh, measurements uh, like this that we can uh, apply and track uh, kind of all the way through. And then lastly, uh, just leave it with this quote. I know we are out of time, uh, but uh, this is an example. I mentioned some notable alumni Hoosiers are everywhere doing really important things. And um, it's great to notice the alumni who are on the big stage. And um, it's uh, very obvious to see the great work that they're doing. Uh, but really the work of community, as you know, is um, it's personal, it's relational. And so um, I would love to share with you this story <clears throat> briefly of one of our student fellows, uh, Victor Sanchez. He's in the, uh, the third one on the right in the back in the black shirt. And so long story short, uh, Victor was studying abroad in Singapore at the beginning of the spring semester of 2020. Um, as you can imagine, uh, he, uh, COVID, uh, the pandemic hit and he uh, was stuck there essentially. Uh, he, did, he had to stay, uh, there were strict uh, interaction regulations, people weren't allowed to go outside um, really at all. And uh, Victor had a really important a final uh, project to uh, submit for his uh, senior year. He thought he was gonna have to email his professor. And instead he reached out to the uh, local Alumni Association president and said, hey, I, I, I'm having issues with my computer. There was a blackout in my building. I'm not going to be able to get my project in. Does anybody have a charger? And he said within five minutes, he was in a group chat with 100 alumni uh, within that vicinity. And uh, he had a charger at his door uh, within five minutes and was able to submit his uh, paper uh, and you know, not worry about his exams, didn't have to email his professor. And so I love this quote that he said in sharing this story. And again, it's a small thing, but it's a big thing for him. And again, that is the um, beauty of community. And so uh, in conclusion, Victor tells us, uh, the Indiana University Alumni Network doesn't have any borders, language, or specific location. It's a community brought together by people from different backgrounds, origins, and experiences that will do anything to support each other and contribute to your success as a Hoosier and as a person. So I can't say it uh, any better than that. So I will uh, end there. Fantastic. This is so, so, um, so many great quotes and such a great content. And uh, it's just wonderful to, um, to see that the alumni just feeling that way. So uh, thank you for sharing. I, I agree. So um, uh, you, you must be very proud, all the alumni. So that's just great. So um, uh, we're out of time for questions. There's some really good questions, but there's something that I picked in the, in the, in the chat. Jojo said, so much to share. How would Lisa like for us to communicate with her from now on so that people can actually ask the questions to you in public if they prefer? Yes, that's an excellent question. And I stopped sharing before uh, one slide too soon. Uh, there. Oh, that was the final piece of trivia. We'll skip that one for now. But this is my email address uh, and my phone number. Uh, feel free to get in touch with me directly. I would love to talk further. Again, I know there were so many uh, details that I had to leave out, unfortunately, because of time. But I would love to tell you the specifics and uh, the ins and outs of how we uh, actually did this work. So um, please uh, feel, to, feel free to reach out uh, anyway. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's great. So Lisa, thank you very much for this wonderful talk. It's been very well received. I can see it uh, on the chat in the session. So um, unfortunately, everyone, we just have to leave it here. So thank you for asking questions too. Um, uh, 
so uh, thank you to our wonderful presenter and uh, please use CMX Summit Rise as the hashtag if you're sharing anything that you've learned from Lisa uh, right now, especially the alumni. So uh, we're going to just jump into our next session right now. Um, uh, so we hope that you get to uh, to join us again on uh, the next session at Club Stage. So um, I'm going to be ending the, the session right now. And thanks for your attention. Thanks for joining. Thanks for your time. Really, really appreciate it. And all the very best, everyone. Thank you.